Well, can you guess what our topic is for tonight? So tonight's topic is refrigerant hoses. And as you see right there, that is the shrink wrap material that you put on electrical wires and electrical looms while you do repairs. And I got like 20 foot, 25 foot rolls of this stuff because I do a lot of electrical too. Um, but have you guys ever had a problem with your hoses leaking, developing little leaks and they wear out fast? I have that problem. I'm rough on my tools. I use them in rough situations. I don't baby them. I don't take off the hoses and nicely uh, wrap them up. I don't always hang my gauges from the back of the vehicle hanging down with nice big loops of refrigerant. They often get bent. And they often get bent. If you ever notice the failures, they'll usually fail right at this point because when you put them in your boxes or you lay them down or up in their trucks, as this gets twisted, they'll pop right here or they'll leak. And sometimes just the surface of the hose, and if you ever looked at a hose real carefully, you see these little pores. Let's see if I could actually see them somewhere on here. This is kind of a bad example for one. Let's see if we could see it on here. There's minute, tiny pores that I can't really focus in on. But the outer jacket of a refrigerant hose was meant to leak. And this is something my father showed me when I was young. And the reason for that is you have different layers of the hose. And if the inner layer leaks, it, the outer layer of the jacket, if you've ever been in an automotive or auto body shop, the outer layer could get this big bubble in it and it could pop and it could damage you, put your eye out, hurt you or something like that. So they actually make them so they leak. Uh, but the problem is you're not supposed to use refrigerant hose for drawing a vacuum, for deep vacuum. If you're trying to do a, a you know, micron test, refrigerant hose was never meant for that. And also, with the way I go through refrigerant hoses, they last me about three months, four months if I'm lucky. And I usually get my failure right here. And if you're ever are using your refrigerant manifolds and refrigerant hoses, and there's a reason they call them refrigerant hoses, they weren't really meant to draw a really deep vacuum. And sometimes pressure, they fail on you while you're trying to do a, a pressure test, a nitrogen uh, decay test overnight or something like that, or a vacuum test, your hoses will be a source of your leak. So, if you look right here, this is what I've done. Here's the here's a standard yellow jacket hose, and here's the hose that I've put a coating on. And if you see how big this is, it slips over, and then you heat it up with the heat gun, and then it'll shrink down. And at the part where it flexes, I added an extra two pieces. I slipped them over and shrank them. So I'll show you. Here's a very large hose, but you see, what is all this stuff? Now, what this is, this is silicone grease and dielectric grease, so that is this. But you also use silicone grease in a laboratory when you're doing deep vacuum uh, tests and performing different functions. Vacuum doesn't pull through silicone grease. So, as I coat the vacuum hose, I push the vacuum hose into its sheathing, and I've been slowly doing this over its whole circumference, as you can see here, trying not to scrape it off. Now that I'm using the camera, now I'm hitting it. When I, without the camera, I don't have a problem. But of course, as soon as you pick up the camera, things have to get difficult. And then as you see, bring it all the way up. Now, this is not 3M's product and there's different grades and different kinds of uh, shrink tubing. This is called a two to one shrink ratio. And then there's three to one shrink ratio. This is not 3M. 3M is the better one. This is my cheaper stuff. 
um, but I'm using it as an experiment because I'm getting really tired. As you know, if you buy one of these big 3 8 hoses uh, after taxes, these things are almost a hundred bucks. They're like 79 bucks to 80 some bucks. Um, so having those only last about three or four months is kind of uh, upsetting <laughs> and expensive, especially since I have like six to eight pairs of refrigerant hoses and I'm always using multiple manifolds every day um, continuously. So I got frustrated and I bought this stuff just for this use, for these hoses, before I invest in the expensive 3M brand uh, to see if this extends the life of my hoses. So 3M and some other manufacturers that are really high quality companies, not only can you get this into two to one, three to one, you also could get this in braided and you could get it so it's ultra flexible. You can get it so it's stiff. Uh, you could get ones with extended temperature ranges. So if you're in the snow uh, and freezing weather, they make ones that don't get stiff in cold weather. So you can actually order this material for different purposes. So I use this, you see how I'd put it on the hose. Then you get the heat gun. And you heat it up and you'll see it shrink. Whoops. And so I'll show you this. And so then you just chase it down the length of the hose. And what you're doing at the same time is you're expelling the air out of the hose around the grease, the silicone grease, you're expelling the air, you're going in one direction, and at the same time you're expelling the air, you're filling up all the pores and you're leaving a thin film of the silicone grease around the hose. Now, you cannot pull air through silicone grease. Silicone grease is a natural vacuum sealant and so there's a dual purpose in this one is to extend the life of my hoses two is to give them a slight edge over a regular refrigerant manifold uh, hose meant for refrigerant charging not for pulling deep vacuums to have a layer of silicone grease to help aid in pulling deeper vacuums. That's the other reason. But one, I'm just tired of spending nearly $1,000 a year on uh, refrigerant hoses for all my manifold sets by having to replace them two or three times a year on each set of manifolds. I'm really hard on hoses and uh, I don't baby them at all. So for you guys who hoses last few years, um, consider yourself lucky back when I used to work in automotive in a shop stationary my hoses lasted I don't know, five years eight years uh, because my hoses always laid out straight and were hung up on the wall but when you uh, go mobile you're very brutal on your tools sometimes at least I am I, I don't take care of my tools as well as I should And so can you see the difference? And so then what I'll come back and do is I'll cut off a short piece about three inches long and I'll slip it over here and I'll do that two or three times with different pieces. So that where this hard overlap, where this hard overlap from the middle where it's crimped at, this is where they fail often. I'll put a piece that goes from here to here to strengthen this area up so when it bends it doesn't kink right there and make a weak spot in the hose. And I'll just repeat this several times until I have a whole, a whole hose that looks like this all the way from beginning to end. I'll do it with the yellow, do it with the blue, and then what you also can do, you can order that in green and pink and different colors. Say you had a set of hoses and you want to dedicate them for R22. 
Well, you could do your red hose and then say the last three inches, you could put a green stripe right here and a green stripe at the other end. And so you or your technician who works for you will always say, okay, this set of hoses is for R22 only. Then you could put pink, say for R410, uh, and you could use whatever color combination you want for your set of hoses. If you want hoses that are dedicated for different refrigerants, you just put a different band on the end of it, shrink it down with that color on it, and you'll know those are a dedicated hose for that certain refrigerant or that certain kind of like POE oil, PAV oil, mineral oil, uh, alkaline benzene. Uh, if you want to do that, you could do that. So that is my, you could say, tech tip for today. For those of you who buy good hoses, as you know, if you buy a 60 inch pair of uh, yellow jacket hoses, you're paying like $69 or so, $70 for a set. And if you know, if you're buying a good uh, 60 inch, this is a piece of shit, Hillmore. They always, I got all of them broke. Nothing Hillmore of mine still lasts. That was the worst investment I ever buy, is buying anything made by Hillmore. Uh, but uh, the yellow jacket, charging hose the big 3 8 ones you know this one hose by itself is approaching a hundred dollars so you don't want it to break all right guys that was the video for today for uh extending the life of refrigerant hoses and hopefully making them so when you pull a vacuum you don't lose the vacuum through the hoses other than if you have contaminated estro oil poe oil See you guys later.